Hey YouTube friends, I'm finally done with it with all the capacitor and uh, out of tolerance resistor replacement. Just want to show you, uh, got the center section done. Uh, down in here, let's see, uh, I put the new capacitors alongside of the uh, old capacitor because if you recall I couldn't get them out because the the headroom here. I got one there and I got these two capacitors replaced way down into the the tuning area and I tested all those resistors in there and they were, they were all good so that, that made me pretty happy because the resistors that are in there are really uh, buried in there. But they tested okay that, that's pretty cool and uh, these were hard to do so I did like the the hook treatment kind of um, made a little hook in there let me see if I can show you that now the capacitors was kind of what I do is like I cut the lead on the capacitor when I replace them and these are like um, the hooks that were like on the terminals that's one reason this took so long because whenever I could I took the leads off the terminals to make a neater job. Let me see if I can show you down into that coil area here. <clears throat> Gotta orientate it so the light can hit it. Let's see. Yeah, that's a lot better. Yeah, I kind of made like a little hook on the lead and then uh, got some heat shrink on the capacitor on the lead and then I uh, solder it to the made a little hook on the lead and solder it to the hook and it came out pretty good did both of those what else have I been doing on this radio besides that um, let's see uh, let's see if I can flip it around here it's pretty heavy and it's off a little off balance but here we go what I did here was I replaced these two bushings here the rear bushing and the bushing that goes to the tuner there and now you know you have uh, some floating on it now they were real hard I'll show you one of the bushings here it's one of the old ones here it's, it's hard you know there's no flexibility in this thing at all it's, it's hard here just bang it here you hear it And they're supposed to be kind of like spongy so at least I got I got some uh, some wobble in there you can see it more up here it's supposed to be all floating the 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 uh, bushings in the front I really couldn't get to those and they're still hard they're hard but they seem to be riveted in and there's no way you could get those out not unless I took this whole assembly out and you know took the wires out that go into it that would be kind of ridiculous but the bushings are not broken they're just hard but at least I have some floating in the chassis now in that sub-assembly chassis because I did replace the the rear of bushings there and they were kind of tough let's see what else did I do um, what I did was I lubricated the the tuning of bushings with this thing here back up a little bit it's uh this is a three-in-one oil can and it has like an extendable nozzle on it and it's kind of good because you could get into the you know where the bearings are with this thing and, and lubricate it but what I did was I want to mention that I dumped the three-in-one oil out because that stuff's garbage you know it kind of gums up and I put like a good motor oil in there a 1030 motor oil and that's what I use to lubricate the bushings of the tuner uh, the bearings I should say uh, lubricate the bearings of the tuner with that and I put a, two drops of oil on the on this here too and what I also did was uh, let's see to show you I gotta go all the way around so let's see spin it all the way around careful here 
I lubricated the uh, the center tuning piece and I kind of put the I fixed it where this was up all the way the other way it's hitting the light fixture now but um, let the oil kind of drip in there and it turns real good now it's real real smooth and what I also did was I uh, used the um, the GC product to um, lubricate the um, and clean the uh, the the, uh, the switch here. Why does the name escape me of that stuff? I had it right here. Here it is. Yeah, da da. I should have remembered. Deox. Deoxit, actually. Deoxit. Good stuff. So I just sprayed a little bit into the switch. And then I activated the switch. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get it ready for power up here. I went through all the positions here. So give it a little time to kind of clean the contacts. And I also lubricated the, uh, put like a drop of oil for this IF expander unit here. And it works really smooth now. You can see like when you turn it, this uh, varies the, uh, the IF here. It gives it more bandwidth and supposedly better for that. Well, it would give it better fidelity, wouldn't it? With better bandwidth. So it's a variable IF expansion unit here. And it moves like these slugs in and out of these transformers. I think that's pretty cool. I've never seen a radio that had that before. And uh, one more thing here. What I did on top was I started rebuilding these light assemblies here. And all the, uh, the um, insulation was just all cracking here. You know, just totally shot. The rubber is just totally shot there. So I just used ordinary electrical tape. And got into the where the light is. Um, there's like a little stud there that the center electrode of the light goes on. Uh, the base, this is just the number 44 bayonet kind of lights. But the center electrode, you know, you don't want that to short out. So I put a little electrical tape around that. Then there's a spring that goes in there where the light bulb inserts, pushes against the spring. And I put electrical tape and extended it out to make it look nice. And it actually looks pretty good. But I wanted to tell you something about this. Uh, the other light bulb, if I could show it, there's two more in here, I believe. There's one there. And let's see. There's one over here. Now, the light bulb is blown. They're, they're all blown. You can see the light bulb's kind of black. The reflector is painted black. They actually put the light bulb in first and then they painted it. So this light bulb and this one over here are actually painted into the, the fixture. So I try to get them out and they're really in there because the paint is holding them in. So why, why Philco would paint the light bulbs in, that's uh, anybody's guess, you know. So that's about it, folks. Uh, what i got to do tomorrow is two things. Uh, populate it with the tubes. Got the tubes all boxed up really safe. And then um, put a nice power cord over here. Got me a nice retro cord I could solder to the uh, input here, the input capacitor. And uh, that's all she wrote. So I've been working on this uh, about uh, six hours today. I wanted to get it all done. And let me tell you something. Uh, I have <laughs> this section here. I figured out that's pretty simple. But I left it for a week. You know, I had Thanksgiving and whatnot. Came back to it. And uh, it was hard to get started. And then even with the pictures, uh, some of the pictures weren't really that good. So... Uh, it was, it was kind of like uh, difficult to get everything wired. So it's not a good thing to let it sit for a week all apart and then try to get back to it. You know? So I worked on it all steady today, about six hours. Got it all ready to go for tomorrow. So take, take it easy, folks. Have a great day. Bye.